Peace. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the beauties of Islam. In today's episode, I'd like to talk about more of the concept of the relationship between the human being and Almighty God. And this is one of the beauties of Islam to have the proper aqidah or understanding with regard to who is Allah and who are we. My name is Yusuf Estes, by the way, and I didn't always uh, know about Islam. I came to Islam some years ago, and I was learning a lot in a hurry from a gentleman who was from Egypt. And he was telling me some things about the concept of God that fascinated me so much. Even when I was doing some preaching, I was a music minister in those days, I had these ideas about God in a way that I said, I can't really catch it. Is he like, you know, it's kind of like a big angel. Is he like Superman? Well, who is God really? Is How can I know? One of the things that my friend, his name was Muhammad, what he taught me was that we don't really fathom God. We cannot really imagine Him. We cannot hear Him, see Him, touch Him, smell Him, taste Him, feel Him, imagine Him, because all of these things are things from the creation. Everything in the creation, this is uh, not God. But God, Allah, in fact, is the one who made all of this. And he's not created, therefore he's not in the creation. So that's an interesting concept. Because I've heard other people say that everything is God. That, you know, the God is in this and God is in that. God is in so and so. And it sounds all right to a point. You get the people who will say that, well, God is everything and everything is God. But you're going to run into a problem in a hurry on that. You know how? Because somebody will challenge you, maybe an atheist, they like to play games with believers anyway. They'll say, so God is everywhere. And they go, yeah, God is everywhere. He's in everything. Yeah, he's in everything. Uh, is he in a rainbow? Oh, yeah, God in a rainbow. Yeah, that sounds nice. In the clouds? Yeah, that sounds good. Is he in the toilet? Yeah, he's in. Ooh, what? What'd you say? No way. God, stop for the law. How you say something like that? Oh, wait a minute. Is he in the HIV virus? Is it AIDS? No, 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 no. Nuclear waste? Radioactive? No, 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 no. Okay, so you're saying God is in some things, but he's not in other things? Uh, uh, so exactly what is God and what's not? Uh, the good stuff is God and the bad stuff is not God. Okay. <laughs> you can see a problem with that right away. In fact, it's in Islam that we find the concept clear. Listen to this. Allah is not the creation, and the creation is not Allah. But Allah can be as close to you as your juggler vein. He can be as close to you as your heart in his knowledge. He has full knowledge of everything all the time. He knows how you feel. Maybe right now you don't feel too good. Maybe you've got some problems. Things are bothering you right now. But he knows that. In fact, the emotions that you experience, the feelings inside of your heart, he knows them better than you do. He's the one who created you. He's the one who gives you the opportunity to recognize these things. Yeah? Now, what else? Another amazing thing here that I learned from my friend is that God is always ready to receive from you your wants, your desires, your petitions, your prayers. You ask Him, but don't ask His creation. If you say, well, I prayed and nothing happened. Wait a minute. You prayed and you didn't see anything happen, but it doesn't mean nothing happened. There are many things in the unseen, the ghaib, that we don't know about. But they still exist. And every prayer you offer to your Creator, He hears it. He knows it. And for sure, it does make a difference. Especially if you are praying directly to Him the way He wants you to do it. And not praying through something that you believe is him or represents him on this earth. In other words, somebody has some statue, an idol, or something that you can hold and look at and say, Oh, I want you to take my prayers to God. And, you know, and they're worshiping this statue or this image. And that's not, that's not God. It's not going to work. If somebody did do that. Let's say he said, oh, I wish, you know, uh, that my friend so-and-so would call me up. And then 
All of a sudden the phone rings. Wow, you know, I was just asking this thing right here and you call me. Wow. So I start believing this has some power in it. Why? You say, well, first of all, if the person called you, could be coincidence, could be, by the way, it is that Allah caused them to do it. And if you want to believe in this thing, this thing will break. You could throw it down and it'll bust in a million pieces. And this had a time when it didn't exist. And then it was brought into existence. Whereas Allah is always an eternal. And realistically, Allah is greater than anything in all of his creation. How can you pick up something in the creation and try to worship it? It doesn't make any sense. The relationship, my friend was telling me about this. He says the relationship between the human being and the God, the Almighty, is one of submission. I submit to him, he doesn't submit to me. I want to talk about that more and, and elaborate on it in the continuation of our program. But first of all, let's take a break. Let's do this and come right back. Let you have a chance to think about what I'm talking about. We're talking about the beauties of Islam. Sit right there. We'll be right back. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman. خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا. Learning how to recite the Quran properly. Learning the meaning of what we recite. Including the ahkam from the verses which we recite. Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life. We we'll listen to the participants and the guests. We'll take your phone calls. We're going to recite life. We'll listen to your recitation. And we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations which we'll state in each episode. Now, your dream Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. <laughs> We're back. You're watching The Beauties of Islam. I'm Yusuf Estes. We've been talking about the concept of the relationship between God and the created human beings, uh, all of his creation. I was telling you about my friend Muhammad, who was from Egypt, helped me to understand about Allah and understand about Islam. In Islam, one of the beauties here is to understand what our relationship is with Almighty God. And he is the master. He is the creator. And he is the one to all the worship should go to him. And he's the one all thanksgiving and praise and uh, extolling him. All of that is for him and him alone. So this means we're in a position of what? Actually, if he's the master, we're the servant. We're the slaves. We're the slave to him. And it's important to realize that today people are either slaves to their own desires or they'll be slaves to the one who created them in the first place. Something to think about, isn't it? What is it that I really want? Do I want the things of this life? Am I looking for a big car, a nice house, maybe a beautiful woman? Maybe I'm looking for position, power over other people. Uh, you know who I am? <laughs> if I'm doing this, then essentially I'm a slave to my own desires. And this is a big, huge problem. On the other hand, if I'm doing what he wants me to do, and I'm serving him, I'm praying to him, I'm asking from him, and I'm doing more than just worship as in the ritualistic worship, but I'm also following the teachings that he has for me, which is to be kind, humble, generous, patient, forbearing, and the qualities that we find in the last and final messenger, which is Muhammad. Peace and blessing be upon him. Now, in some of our other episodes, we're going to talk about this beauty of Islam, which is, of course, Prophet Muhammad. But right now, I just want to come back to this characteristic of the human. He, if he has the qualities that I just outlined, if he's picked this up from the teachings of the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him, then he will experience a different kind of a life than another person who is a slave to his desires. 
Because regardless of what you experience in this life, whether you call it good or you call it bad, the real ultimate is going to be on the Day of Judgment. And there will be a Day of Judgment. Because after all, that's the only way anything makes any sense. How could it be fair that some good people have all these disasters happen to them, and well, on the other hand, some bad people are having all these good things, by our standards anyway. So how would that be right? Well, there will be a day of recompense. There's going to be a day of settling accounts. There'll be a day that will come when every one of us will have to atone for what we've done, but then it's going to be what? Too late. Too late, because at that stage of the game, we're going to be faced with our Lord and we're going to be looking at like, uh-oh, we're in trouble, big trouble. Because then, every part of our body will bear witness against us. Our tongue will be saying, you know what he made me say? The eyes. You know what he made me look at? The ears. You know what he made me listen to? The hand. You know what he made me take? The feet. You know where he made us walk to? It's not a good idea to be standing there on the day of judgment, nowhere to go, even your skin is testifying against you in front of the ultimate judge. And Allah says, Alayhi salahu bi al hakimin. Isn't Allah the best of judges? And He's the one going to judge you, and you're going to testify against yourself. But then it's too late, isn't it? So again, my friend was explaining to me, look, it's very simple. All you have to do is recognize there really is God. He's one. And you worship Him according to the way that He wants you to worship Him. And when you make mistakes, and this is the biggest part of the whole thing, you will make mistakes. Know that. You're a human. You will make mistakes. You're supposed to. And it's not about not making mistakes. This life is not about not making mistakes. This life is about what to do after you've made a mistake. If you have sinned, if you've wronged anybody, if you have not fulfilled your obligation as a human being in front of your Creator, then what do you do? How do you deal with it? Ah, and this is what's called tawbah. We talked about it before, the going back to Allah, the repenting to Allah on His terms. Now, if you've damaged people, you must also go to them and get their forgiveness too. And if you owe, you have to pay. And this is right. You don't just expect people to allow you to come in and do what you want to do and damage their lives and mess them up and you get away with that. No. We've all made mistakes. We've all hurt other people. So we go to the people and ask for their forgiveness. And we go to Allah and ask for His forgiveness. And if we're sincere in our hearts, He'll forgive us. Maybe the people won't, but that's their problem. You've tried your best and that's all you can do at that stage. If each and every one of us would think about this and try to live that kind of a life, it would be a better place to live. It would be a lot better. And this would be fulfilling the proper relationship between us and our Lord. He's the master. He's the creator. He's the dictator. And he dictates what's going to happen. And we are what? We're the servants. And we're trying our best. And when we make mistakes, we understand that there is a place for us to get out of the trouble by going back to him and in our hearts be sincere and say to him, O oh Allah, forgive me. O oh Lord, that created everything, forgive me. You are the only one and I'm sorry for what I've done. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you sitting there right now, you know exactly where you're at with this. All you got to do is turn to him. And if you think he can't forgive you, You've really underestimated your Lord. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The worst of the worst of the worst people are those who believe they made so many sins that Allah can't forgive them. Because he can. Oh yeah, he can forgive all of us. Even you and me. Well, that wraps up for this episode for now for the Beauties of Islam. But be sure to visit our website, beautiesofislam.com. And until next time, may Allah grant you peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Islam